The healthcare detective, Frank Lally, has written a book for Simon & Schuster about how to get affordable health care. Called Your Best Healthcare Now, it is available online, in-store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade and the former editor of Money and George magazines. And I hear he's just gotten even busier. What are you doing now, Frank? Well, you know, I've just signed up as a senior advisor to healthcare.com. Hi, Frank. What's going on out there? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? It's cold out. That's the first thing that's going on. Um Hey, maybe we should just get rid of this, uh, the Affordable Care Act a lawsuit that's uh, bouncing around in the news. And just to clarify for people, that case, which seemed implausible, is still alive. So um, the, the Trump White House and the uh, Justice Department is trying to get the Affordable Care Act ruled unconstitutional and just wipe it out. OK, so uh, it, it seemed like that could not happen. But the co- but that case keeps getting affirmed in the lower courts. It's going to end up in the Supreme Court. And uh, as we say in showbiz, anything can happen. And that's so the individual to, mandate, basically. Uh, it, 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 it's more than that. It's okay. the entire Affordable Care Act. You would wipe it out uh, more than the, the individual mandate is gone already. But this will wipe out the Affordable Care Act, period, uh, preconditions, uh, you know, pre-existing conditions. The whole the whole bill would get wiped out. Really? Uh, the whole law would get wiped out. So so let's just hope that that just does not happen. Um, anyway, all right. So here's another thing we want to talk about today. Um, and that's, a, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you and I were talking uh, about the fact that Japanese people live on average something like six years longer than we do. They live all the way to age 84 on average, uh, and we only make it to about 78. Remember the old um, Nike commercial, Gotta Be the Shoes? It's got yeah. fo- it's to got, it's be the food. <laughs> got to be the food. Well, I know. this is So, you know, this is despite us spending twice as much as uh, on health care as all, any other uh, developed country in the, in the world, okay? Um, and you said, yeah, you, you're, you had one theory, which is they, you know, in Japan, they've got this alternative Asian medicine that could be an edge that they have that we don't, uh, we don't normally uh, follow here the way they do in Japan. No question about that. So that actually got me thinking about the research that I did for my book, Your Best Health Care Now, because I addressed alternative medicine. And I came away, as you know, a skeptic of alternative medicine and uh, for two main reasons. Now, number one, overriding. I could not find any major studies affirming that alternative medicine actually works. A lot of anecdotal stuff, but no real big study affirming it. How are you? Wait, before, before, but but, 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 how how are you defining? Are we, we, what, what are we, what falls under alternative? Are you talking about complementary? What what, are you talking about? Homeopathy? Are you talking about Chinese? I mean, you're talking about modalities that have been in existence for 5,000, 8,000 years, those? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Anything that's not conventional medicine, where you go to a doctor to, you go to a, you know, someone with herbs and tea and that kind of stuff. Uh, and acupuncture, throw the acupuncture in there as well, which is very common. And and I gotta see the other thing I gotta ask yourself is, if Asian medicine was the answer, why do people in China, Vietnam, Thailand, I could go on, they die use, younger than we do? But that they was the use, answer. They should be living as least as long as we do, but, but they, they do use, not. Okay. I mean, A, okay. A, A, they use both, but B, um, you also have a tremendous population that doesn't um, – one, one of the things that I've found, having, having used both, having employed both, particularly with my mm-hmm. – uh, with, 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 with both pets and with humans, uh, mm-hmm. and I have a human um, uh, breast cancer uh, – absolute survivor, I don't know, 30 years on now, um, right. that, that, um, that had an option on both, but she had a really good, uh, she, she, she had a really good Chinese doctor in London as it happened. And, uh, yeah. they sorted Listen, it, but, but there's, there's so much, uh, anecdotal evidence, sure. All kinds of stories and so on, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple of anecdotal, uh, stories as well. That's what we're going to talk about today. So I got to ask you a question. If you believe that conventional doctors, conventional medicine could no longer help you, you now, all right, would you accept the pain that comes with being ill or even a slow death? Or would you grasp at an alternative therapy, no matter how implausible it might sound, if it promised you the hope of a cure? What would you do? Me? 
Yes, you. That, that, that I, again, I have to I, I have to disqualify myself from that uh, question because mm. um, I again have because I've been I've been lashing out Arnica to people who have come near me for for years, etc. Mm -hmm. I have been taking ever since a trip to Paris when I was coming down with flu, oslocosinum for years. Right. So um, right. I wouldn't go there at the end. I would right, do things right. in conjunction with. I'm like okay. I. I'm you, not. You would. You would try. You would try any avenue that that would work. No, but I wouldn't. You wouldn't rule out. You wouldn't rule out conventional medicine. Of course not. I wouldn't rule no, out okay. conventional medicine, right. but nor so, would I rule out. Um, yeah, I, and that's why else. I said complementary. Sure. All right. So. Um, so that actually leads me to a couple of stories I want to tell you because this is stuff I worked on on the book. So there's a woman I'll call her Jan from New Mexico. She's actually a pretty good friend of mine. She was riddled with cancer, okay? And her doctor took one look at her and urged her to begin chemotherapy that day. Let's start today. Uh, and she flat out refused. She said, nope, no chemo for me. I've seen too many of my friends on chemo. They waste away. They die anyway. They die in agony. That's not for me. Instead, she checked into a clinic run by a dietitian in Indiana. Now, Indiana is important because it has very lax medical licensing laws out there, thanks to the ex-governor, Mike Pence. You might have heard of him. Deregulation, right? So she goes out there. She gets infusions of green tea. Now, to be precise, decaffeinated green tea and some other stuff that sounds kind of wacky to me at a price of $10,000 a day. So she ends up spending around $200,000 uh, for that kind of therapy. And guess what? <laughs> it didn't help. She got sicker and sicker. Now, I'm happy to say at that point, I, I did intercede. I got her into a clinical trial at the City of Hope in Los Angeles, where she got a drug called Ibrance. You might have heard of this. It's uh, turning out to be a very effective drug for uh, postmenopausal women with advanced cancer. And guess what? She's been in remission now for the past three years. So that story has a good, happy ending. That alternative medicine didn't work. But she turned to conventional medicine finally, and, and she is in remission, so good for her. But then there's a story of Giovanni. He's another good friend of mine. He's in New Jersey. Uh, he's a former Korean War vet and a black belt. So in his prime, he was a, a real strong guy. But six years ago, he felt a weakness in his left arm, and it got worse and worse. And that led to the diagnosis of an autoimmune disease, something like Lou Gehrig's disease, not precisely that. His disease is, goes, goes by its initials, IBM, but it, it, it ends up in the same place because it relentlessly degenerates muscle. So Giovanni, he's seen scores of conventional doctors and no one can help him. Uh, he, there isn't any drug for IBM. Uh, he can't find a clinical trial anywhere in the world that he might be able to enroll in. There's no help for him. For four years ago, he turned to an alternative doctor in New York City. And I'm talking to Giovanni well, before he wrote the check and got the treatment. And he said to me, look, I know this guy might be a quack. Now, I did not introduce that word. He did. But then he said, look, I'm a fighter. I, I black belt. I, I just can't stay home and get weaker and weaker. I have to do something to try to help myself. So he gave that doctor $25,000, which is a lot of money for Giovanni. Um, and the doctor gave him oxygen and light therapies, some very expensive vitamins from Germany, the doctor claimed, and an injection of stem cells from a pig. <laughs> I said, John, <laughs> Stem cells from a pig? What was that like? And he said, it hurt. <laughs> it hurt. And this hurt too. Besides his $25,000, Giovanni lost another 20 pounds of muscle. So, and, and I have to say, unfortunately, to this day, uh, he's still at home. Conventional medicine is not helping. He's slowly getting weaker and weaker. All right. So what, what can our listeners take away from those two anecdotes and it from was... your experiences? Uh, here are the things, if you're going to have an alternative medicine, here are the questions to ask before you go and start the treatment. Number one, does the provider have sketchy credentials? Now, needless to say, Jan's dietitian, uh, who claims that decaffeinated green tea is going to eradicate cancer, 
uh, that sketchy credentials to the T, okay? But Stay away we, from anybody making promises like that. Could we stop right there for one second? Um, yes, you may. How does, I mean, really really and truly, it, it, this is the question that you asked me, and this is why I had to recuse myself from the answer. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm just going to liken this to diets. There are so many inefficient diets out there that people get on and... Um, you know, ultimately get off. Uh, mm-hmm. You 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 have to actually know what you're doing in this realm. You have to. You can't just pick any old person. Uh, no, but, you, but, you, you, but people get desperate, and uh, like the two examples I gave. So you've got to look at the credentials. Do they sound plausible? Secondly, does the provider want cash up front? Does the provider have very high fees? I've interviewed the investigators, health investigators, and they say even a doctor asking for 500 bucks up front is fishy to them. Their, their fraud antenna goes up. A dietitian at $10,000 a day, that's ridiculous. Danger Will Robinson. Cr- that's, that's probably criminal. It should be criminal. If it wasn't in Indiana, it would be criminal. If it was in California, there'd be somebody knocking on a door and closing down the clinic. Does the provider promise exclusive medicine that will cure you? Overpromising like that. Uh, the investigators tell me there are no miracle alternative cures. Okay? Alternative, if, if the provider is saying, I'll cure you with some therapy that sounds unproven, uh, stay away. You're, gonna, you're wasting your money. And does the, rep- does the, does the provider have any, any kind of support data? for the claims. So obviously Jan and Giovanni's uh, uh, providers just walked around saying, listen, we have quote unquote, some outstanding success, but they didn't have anything, a clinical uh, report, uh, peer reviewed that backed up their therapies. They just made claims even in writing, but the claims were not backed up with anything. And one more thing, and this you got to keep in mind, if you fall for a phony cure, okay, you've written the check, it didn't help you. In fact, you got worse. There's a very good chance the police, the cops are not going to be able to help you, those health investigators. Well, I interviewed in New York State uh, the attorney general's expert on medical fraud, the top person. And I told her Giovanni's story. And I said, I think he's ripped off. And she said, yeah, it sounds like he really got ripped off. I said, can you do anything about it? She said, no, I need a pattern. And you have to bring me like 10 cases like that from the same doctor. Then maybe we have the resources to investigate. But just one case, nothing I can do. So they're not, if you throw your money away like that, there's, the cops are not going to be able to help you. So look, here's my bottom line on this. Uh, if I ever got into Giovanni's situation or Jan's situation, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what I'd do or what I'd pay for for some kind of hope. Okay. But I am determined to not pay a dime for the sugar high of false hope. Don't go for false hope. Try to get help, but don't fall for phony cures. Thank you, Frank, the healthcare detective and senior advisor to healthcare.com. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable healthcare to healthcaredetective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. Also, look for his book, Your Best Healthcare Now, available online, in-store, and on my desk.